Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm so excited to do. It is going to be a new one in my regret series. I have not posted a video in my regret series for a while and I knew it was time to make a comeback. And today I'm gonna to be talking about the makeup that I regret buying. Ooh, so I will link my regret series down below. I like to do one of these videos every few months talking about makeup I regret buying, don't regret buying, regret not trying sooner, regret not picking up, all of the things, all of the things. So I will link that playlist down below. If you wanna hear about the products that I regret spending my hard earned money on, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we are still filming with only natural light. Uh, if you have not caught it or seen me talk about it, I have recently moved. So I am in a new location and I feel like I am still kind of echoey in this room, which is a little surprising to me because I now have two desks, a bench, plus a rug. And I really thought the rug would help the most, but I feel like I sound exactly the same. So I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not sure what to do about that. Still trying to work on the audio and um, my lights unfortunately did break in the move. I have ordered some new lights and they just came in and I haven't even opened the box yet because I know I have to like put them all together and I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna figure it out because we, we're gonna need to get some lights in here. So this is what we are working with right now, but I know a lot of you told me that you still liked the lighting in my in my last two videos that I posted. So thank you. I feel like people are just being nice to me right now, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it regardless. So that is how we are rolling today, but it should be a pretty quick video. I just have a few products here to talk about that I regret spending my money on. And let's start with this product because it was pretty darn expensive. Uh, oh, I did wanna say, um, today on my face, I have some products from my recent Sephora haul, like the Fenty uh, Ease Drop, and then also the Dior Powder No Powder. I have a demo on my Instagram Reels applying those two together. And then I also picked up from Kaja, their like Bento Trio with a cream bronzer, blush, and highlight. And I will also have a demo of that on my Instagram Reels. So that is what I have on my face today. So far, I'm really liking everything I grabbed from the sale, but I am planning to do a trying new makeup with some of the other products that I picked up also. So if you haven't seen my Sephora haul yet, I will link it in the cards. But to talk about this first product, this is from Hourglass, so you know it's gonna be expensive. This was their Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray. This was $48. That's pretty pricey for a setting spray, right? But I was hearing good things about it, and I, I'm, I know that I bought it during a sale. I know that I didn't spend $48 full price on a setting spray. And you know, when I first got it, like, can you even see that? Like, it's a really fine mist, which I enjoy. So I was like, oh, I think that I'm going to like this. I never reach for it. I don't know if I can pinpoint exactly what it is that I don't like about it. Cause like I said, I like the mister. I like that it's super fine. It doesn't disturb my makeup. But I guess with this one, I just don't notice anything with it. You know, I typically use either a setting spray or a finishing spray to one, make my makeup last longer. You know, that's always that's always an important thing. Um, but I also really like to use a makeup spray to melt everything together. I do have more oily skin, so I use powders a lot more, um, like you know, powdering my skin, powder foundations, and sometimes things can look a little cakier or heavier on me or feel that way. And you can use a really good uh, finishing spray to kind of help melt everything together and look more natural. And I just, I don't feel like, I don't, I don't feel like anything happens when I use this. I just feel like I spray my face and then I'm like, okay. Um, so I, I mean, that's why I never reach for it because I don't just spray my face just to, just to do it, just, just for fun. There's reasons why I'm using setting sprays and I just find myself reaching for ones that I love so much more. Obviously like the Urban Decay, um, All Nighter, I've talked about that one forever. The Milk Makeup Hydro Grip, Hydro Grip Benefit just came out with their Super Setter. I've talked about that in a few videos. That one is really good, but this is one that I just don't notice anything with it, so I very rarely reach for it, so it's just sitting there, $48. Just sitting there. This next product actually did not make it in my move with me, and it's, <sighs> it's so interesting because I had it packed, and then I was like, why am I doing this? I don't use this product. I don't want to use this product. I literally was going to bring it with me simply to put it in this video because I've had this video on my list to do for a while. I was like, oh, but I'm, I'm putting it in my regrets video. Like I can hold it up. I'm like, 
you don't have to do that. So instead I will insert a photo because I, I have the ability to do something like that. But the product is from One Size. This is the Go Off Makeup Dissolving Mist. This is Patrick Star's beauty brand that's available at Sephora. I just picked up the mini, which was $18. Um, you know, a lot. If I can purchase a mini of something, I, I usually want to. It's harder for me to go through products because I have a larger collection. It's also, it's just less money, and especially if it's something skincare related, you can test it out and see if you enjoy it. So I'm really glad I didn't purchase the full size because I used this a few times to test it out. And you know, of course, I did the Instagram video spraying it all over my face and looking like at the camera, you know, the things that people enjoy clicking on is sometimes very strange, but people enjoy seeing that. So, you know, I did all those things and I was like, I just really don't like this. And I never used it again after like those three, four times that I tried it, never used it again. It was collecting dust in my bathroom and I was like, let's put you in a moving truck. That's like, why, like why? So that one got left behind. But I just really didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy spraying my face, which obviously you don't have to spray your face. You could, you know, spray it on your hands. You could spray it on um, your makeup eraser or a washcloth or anything like that and then put it on your face. But I still just really, I, I, I just wasn't enjoying it. It kind of felt, I, I didn't like the feeling of it. It just, you know, like, yeah, and I feel like after I would even wipe it off, I would still feel that feeling and I just, I, I really didn't enjoy it. It also was very, um, like it would get in my hair, whether I sprayed it on my face or whether I sprayed it on my makeup eraser and then put it on my face, I felt like it was turning my hair very, very oily, um, like around, you know, obviously like the face framing pieces. I felt like if they even so much like got a whisper of it on my hair, my hair then turned super oily and you know, sometimes I get skincare in my hair. It just is what it is. And I, I didn't really notice, like I don't really notice anything adverse when that happens, but for some reason with that product, I just wasn't enjoying it. And I really didn't feel like it took everything off. Um, you know, I do double cleanse, but usually for the first product that I'm going in with, I really wanted to be removing as much makeup as it possibly can. And I just really feel like that one didn't. So unfortunately that one did not work out for me. I really don't see people using it all that often. I don't know, did you guys purchase it? Are you still using it? Is it your favorite? I mean, I'm sure I'm probably mentioning someone's favorites. I definitely am mentioning someone's favorites in this video, okay? So that's totally fine if you love it, but unfortunately it just didn't work for me. Talk about this product next, kind of what I was referencing to. I mean, I don't know if this is anyone's favorite product from the brand, but anytime I talk about not liking a product from Rare Beauty, people come at me so fiercely and i like products from the brand their new blush their new lip balm i was just wearing that the other day i just purchased the eyeshadow palette that they came out with like not everything from a brand is going to work for me but this one i do regret buying because i just i had that feeling of i'm not going to like this and then i bought it anyways because i'm just like i'm excited about the brand i'm curious about it i'm curious to try the products but from rare beauty i picked up their liquid luminizer and i picked up the shade enchant yeah, no, so especially, I'm slowly getting more into cream and liquids, very, very slowly, but I also am still pretty particular about the ones that I use, and I definitely have some favorites. I'll say that the cream bronzer in that Kaja stack, I actually really like. I thought it looked really good. I'm very excited about it right now, but especially highlights. I feel like the only liquid highlight I'm still down with is the Charlotte Tilbury Highlight Wand. A lot of other liquid highlights I just tend to not enjoy. Um, and especially just on a whole, I just prefer a more powder foundation. But I grabbed this one even though I was like, I don't know. And I just, it did nothing for me. I, to me, it didn't even seem, it didn't even seem like a highlighter. Like it just, Like I wanna say, oh, if you enjoy a more subtle highlight, like maybe you would like this one. But to me, it, like, it wasn't even a highlighter at all. It, it just didn't, like nothing happened. Like I, I just was like, I don't understand. And I'm just, you know, it was a product that I didn't think I would enjoy and I took a chance on it anyways. And then, you know, obviously I review the products that I buy. I review the products that I get sent to try out. So, you know, I review it and then people are like, you just don't like Rare Beauty. And I'm like, then why would I buy the products? Like, it doesn't even make any sense. Unfortunately, this one is just, I don't know, it's just not for me. I just, I really, I really didn't like this one. So, why this one made the move, I don't know. 
it probably didn't need to make the move, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> All right, next up, I'll add another little photo in here. I did an empties slash declutter video, and I know that I put this one in here in the declutter because I was like, I this one is not making the move for me. There were some products that I was like so adamant that it wasn't making the move, and some products that I was like, I'll let it slide. Like, why? I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, but this is from Maybelline, and this is the Instant Age Rewind Concealer. I'm just so bummed about this one because like I said, and I, I I put it in that empties and declutter video and then I did also review it in, in a makeup monthly. This used to be my holy grail concealer. I have repurchased that concealer so many times. I think I was even wearing it before I was on YouTube. Like it was just, Maybelline was like my brand when I was in, especially college and post-college, Maybelline was my brand. And I use that concealer like crazy. I mean, I don't know if it's just getting older and my skin changing or what it is, but it just did not work for me anymore. It was so drying on my under eyes and just any time that I wore it, it did not look cute. I bought it because I did a video on um, using makeup that my subscribers had pan on or used all the way up and so many people wrote in with that concealer and I was like, wait, that used to be my favorite. Like I should buy this again to have it back in my collection and try it out. And I was shocked at how much I hated it. So I did have a few people say though that you used to love it also and you've tried it again recently and you don't love it as much. So I don't know. I, you know, I hate to say it, it's like because I'm getting older. But I, I don't know if that's what contributed to it. But I know a lot of people still really love it. Um, I posted a TikTok the other day of um, like makeup that I don't enjoy at Target and I put that in there and so many people were like, that's my holy grail. It's like, it used to be mine too. I want to love it. I want to love all of the makeup. You know me. Like I don't like disliking things, but that's just not the way the world works. Next up is a product that very much surprised me and I'm putting this in a regrets especially for the price tag because it's another higher priced item. But I'm also, I'm really surprised that this one did not work out for me because let me tell you what it is. This is from Natasha Denona. This is her I Need a Nude Glow Highlight. I'm so surprised because I, her, um, blanking on the name, Super Glow Highlight, right? Yes, her Super Glow Highlight in Fair is one of my all-time favorite highlights. One of my favorites. I've talked about it so much. I wear it so much. Love that highlight. So when I bought this one, which is $42, which is, you know, pretty expensive for a highlight, I was so surprised that I did not enjoy it more. So surprised. I know I mentioned this in like a follow-up video. Um, I always, you know, follow up with my hauls and my first impressions and I rank them now and I ranked it, you know, pretty, how, how, do, how do I want to say that? I ranked it pretty low or pretty high. I, I never know how I should say that, but I, I didn't rank it very high is what I'll say. And I, you know, I was surprised and I saw, you know, some people in the comments were like, I'm shocked that you didn't love it. And I'm like, me too. I just, I like a more blinding, intense highlight, and I just didn't feel like I, I don't know, I just didn't, look at that, like I just didn't feel like I was, lighting's not great, but I just didn't feel like I was getting that from this highlight. I feel like the actual product in the pan is like very firmly pressed, and I have to use a really dense brush, like with her super glow highlight, I mean, that highlight is easy to go overboard on. Very, and like, I don't need to use a dense brush and sometimes I, do, I wanna use like a fluffier brush because it's like, oh, maybe I don't want it to be as intense today. But this one, it's like, I just, I, I, for, I have two highlights in here, that's so bizarre. But for me, I like something a little bit more glowy. I mean, quite honestly, I mean, it's like, it, mm, today's okay. I, out of the Kajra Trio, the highlight is what I like the least right now. This is only my second day trying it, but because I just don't think it's like enough. Like I don't, I don't feel like I have enough oomph, you know? So $42, once again, I'm fairly confident that I got this on sale, but I'm just, I'm never, like I'm not gonna reach for it. Once again, I probably shouldn't have even moved with this. I probably should have just put it in my giveaway box that I was giving to some friends before I moved. I probably should have just done that. That wasn't very smart of me. But yeah, I'm just bummed that I spent a higher price tag on it and I'm really not gonna reach for it very often. So that is it. Those are all the products that I purchased recently that I regret buying, I regret spending my money on. Let me know, have you purchased anything recently that you got some regrets about? I would always love to know. Uh, other than that though, that's it for today's video. So if you enjoyed it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. I hope you also consider subscribing before you go and I'll see you in my next video.